Sure. These strategies are number one, push God out of the schools. If the people grow up without reference to God, then they will consider God irrelevant to day-to-day -to -day life. In the last 50 years, this has happened. God is irrelevant to most people. Number two, break the traditional Judeo-Christian family concept. Break communication between parents and children so that parents can't pass on spiritual values to their children. Do this by pushing excessive child rights. Number three, remove restrictions on sex. Sex is the biggest joy and Christianity robs people of this. People must be freed to enjoy it without restrictions. It's not just for married, it's for everybody. Number four, since sex is the greatest expression of man's enjoyment of life, man must be free to express sex in all its forms. Homosexuality, orgies, even bestiality are desirable so long as no one is being abused or harmed. Number five, people must be free to abort unwanted children. If a man can have sex and then live without the consequences, then the same should be true for a woman too. A woman must have the right to abort an unwanted child. Number six, every person develops soul bonds. So when a soul bond wears out a person must be free to divorce. When one starts to grow, one must be free to get together with that person even if they are married. Number seven, diffuse religious radicalism. Christianity says Jesus is the only way. Diffuse this by A, silencing Christianity and B, promoting other faiths, the creation of interfaith harmony. Number eight, use the media to influence mass opinion. Create mass opinion that is receptive to these values by using TV, film, the press, etc. Note well what Western believers call normal in the African church would be pornography. Number nine, debase art in all its forms, corrupt music, painting, poetry, and every expression of the heart and make it obscene, immoral, and occultic. Debase the arts in every way possible. And number 10, get the church to endorse every one of these nine strategies. Get the church to accept these principles and to say they're okay. Then legal ground is given for these values to get a foothold. If you have been closely following all the information that I have shared with you up until this point, then you are now prepared to see what I promised to show you earlier, and that is the big picture. You see, in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3 and verse 15, the Bible says, that which hath been is now and that which is to be hath already been, and God requireth that which is past. In other words, the things that have taken place in the past are now taking place in our present day society. And those things which will transpire in the future have already, at least in principle, transpired in our past. Therefore, God requires of us to have an accurate knowledge of history so that we can have a clear discernment of those things that are taking place in our present day society and so that we can make accurate projections of those things that will transpire in the near future. So now the question is, what does all this have to do with Obama supporting homosexuals? Well, here's the point. In the past, Adolf Hitler, who was a major political figure, falsely professed to be a Christian. But in reality, he was advancing the New Age occult agenda of Madame Blavatsky 
All of this he was doing in his campaign to erect a new world order. So now, in our present day, President Barack Obama, the most prominent political figure in the world, is not only falsely professing to be a Christian, but is as well being used by his superiors to carry out the New Age occult agenda of Madame Blavatsky's successor, Alice A. Bailey, to establish a new world order. Number one, Obama is not a true Christian. Like Hitler, Obama's Christianity is just a thin veneer to mask his espousal of the New Age agenda. In 2004, Obama was interviewed by Kathleen Falsani. In their interview, Kathleen Falsani asked Obama if he was a Christian. Here was how their interview went. Obama, I am a Christian, so I have deep faith. On the other hand, I was born in Hawaii, where obviously there are a lot of Eastern influences. I believe that there are many paths to the same place. And that is a belief that there is a higher power, a belief that we are connected as a people. Falsani, have you always been a Christian? Obama, I was raised more by my mother, and my mother was a Christian a deeply spiritual person and would spend a lot of time talking about values and give me books about the world's religions. Falsani, so you got yourself born again? Obama, yeah, and I'm not somebody who is always comfortable with language that implies I've got a monopoly on the truth. I'm a big believer in tolerance. Falsani, what is sin? Obama, being out of alignment with my values. Falsani, an example of a role model who combined everything you said you want to do in your life and your faith. Obama, I think Gandhi is a great example of a profoundly spiritual man who never slipped into intolerance or dogma. Notice that in this interview, Obama says that he is a Christian with deep faith, and yet he also says that he believes that there are many paths to the same place. This is absolute hypocrisy. For to be a man of deep faith, he must be a man that deeply believes in all that is taught in the Bible, which is the Word of God. We are told in the book of Romans chapter 10 and verse 17, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And that very same word of God, which is the only source of truth faith, teaches in the book of John chapter 14 and verse 6, that Jesus himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. So any man of deep Christian faith knows that the Word of God, which is the Bible, clearly teaches that the only path to God and eternal life is Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, whom is the only one that shed his blood to save all of humanity from the death penalty of our sins. Furthermore, speaking of sin, when Obama was asked, what is sin, his response was, being out of alignment with my values. Well, what are his values? They are obviously not Christian because he does not believe in the plainest statements of the word of God, which teaches us in the book of 1 John chapter 3 and verse 4, that whomsoever sinneth transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Simply put, sin is to break God's law, the Ten Commandments. So, in Obama's response to what is sin, he was absolutely in left field when he responded, being out of alignment with my values.